In the Screenwriter's Bible, David Trotter proposed the magnificent seven plot points as his own interpretation of the classic three-act structure. Let's take a look at those points and see how well they hold up across different movies. They may help you structure your next story. In order, the seven plot points are backstory, catalyst, big event, midpoint, crisis, showdown, and realization. Act 1. Act 1 contains the catalyst, the big event, and sometimes the backstory. Here, the purpose of Act 1 is the usual, set up characters and the conflict. But according to David Trotter, you should split your first act into two, with the catalyst coming at about the 10th page of the script to take your protagonist out of their common world and into a new situation. The big event, on the other hand, closes Act 1 with a bang. On the other side of the big event, your character should have a clear goal and a plan to achieve it. The big event often comes at a direct consequence of the catalyst. Now, you may notice we skipped the backstory. That's because while the backstory can be shown at the start of the movie, that is rarely the case. More often, the character's backstory is talked about in dialogue but never shown. It's a trauma or a wound that gives context to the character's present actions. The union of backstory, catalyst, and big event forms the blueprint of many of the greatest first acts in cinema. Thelma leaves on a trip with Luis for the catalyst, and the big event is when Luis shoots the creep in the parking lot. Luis's backstory in Texas is never shown, but the movie makes it clear said backstory is what made her pull the trigger in that parking lot. Iron Man plays around with the structure a bit. The catalyst happens five minutes into the movie when Tony Stark's escort is attacked. His backstory follows presented a quick montage of his personal history, which is being played at an award ceremony. The big event is his escape from the compound using the first version of the Iron Man suit. Dr. Schultz rescues Django from slavers in Django Unchained, making the catalyst be the titular unchaining. After the death of the brittle brothers, Django tells Schultz his backstory as a married slave. The agreement to work together and save Broomhilda is the big event. Act 2 Act 2 is where stakes are raised and the conflict ramps up. It's when Thelma and Luis become fugitives, when the Avengers are all together in the helicarrier, and when Tony Stark begins to build his Mark II suit. Two more points come in at Act 2, the midpoint and the crisis. The midpoint, as the name implies, splits the second act in half. Usually this point contains a major defeat, but it can also be a soaring victory. David Trotter says the midpoint is often a point of no return for the protagonist. The crisis, on the other hand, is a major loss that closes the second act, leaving our heroes broken, hopeless, and often wishing they had never started this adventure in the first place. It's the low before the showdown's high. Thelma and Luis have their money stolen in the midpoint. The movie's crisis is the first chase scene in the desert, where the two just barely manage to escape when all hope seemed lost. Iron Man has his first flight with Mark II in the midpoint of the movie. A thrilling and climactic event that is infused with the character and conflict when Tony Stark's reckless personality leads him to find out about the ice problem the hard way. The crisis comes when the reactor in Tony's chest is stolen and he's left to die by the movie's antagonist. Django and Dr. Schultz's arrival at Candyland is the movie's midpoint where they're deep in enemy territory and up to the neck in their own lies. The crisis comes when Schultz dies and Django is captured. Act 3 the third act is entirely dedicated to the showdown, with just a small part at the end left for the realization, which is sometimes left implied. The showdown is a climactic conclusion of the story, where the good guy finally wins, or sometimes when they lose for good. If the movie has a thesis or a central idea, it's usually made clear here. After the showdown comes a realization, the epilogue of the movie. Here, we see the results of the adventure, the changes made to the world and characters. Thelma and Louise have their showdown surrounded by cops and facing a cliff. The movie ends with a fade to white, saving us from the gruesome aftermath of their final jump. However, we do get to see how far the two protagonists have come in their final moments. Iron Man's showdown is the final fight between Tony and the traitor Obadiah. The resolution comes in the form of a press conference where Tony reveals he is Iron Man. In Django and Chain, the showdown takes the form of the final shootout at Candyland. In the film's short moment of realization, we see Candyland explode before Django rides off into the night with his dear wife by his side. That's it for The Magnificent Seven. But before you head out to write your own novel or script using David Trotter's structure, remember that the man himself said these points are meant to be guidelines, not hard rules. 
Use them only so far as they don't get in the way of you telling your story. 